Stop button. From Paths to Literacy. The story of Lewis Braille. Overview of the life of Lewis Braille, who created the Braille code as a means for people who are blind to read and write. Series navigation less than less than who's who in Braille stories of Braille users. By Cheryl Kushner, special to the Los Angeles Times. January 2005. Part 1. The story of Lewis Braille. In 1812, in the small village of Coupre, France, three-year-old Louis Braille played in his father's harness shop next to the family's house. His father was one of the best harness makers in the area. Mr. Braille also made reins, saddles and collars for the villagers' horses. He cut strips of leather and punched holes in the leather with sharp tools. Louis had been warned that he was too young to play with the tools in the shop. That day, Mr. Braille stepped outside the shop to help a customer. Lewis thought he would try to punch a hole in a piece of leather just like his father did. He grabbed the tool and tried to push it through the leather. He didn't have the strength of his father. He tried again, pushing harder. The tool slipped from his hand and flew up and into his left eye. Lewis screamed with pain. His parents, two sisters and brother ran to help him. They put a cloth over his eye. There was no hospital in Coupre. The closest doctor was very far away. They took Lewis to a woman in the village who used herbal medicines to treat injuries and sicknesses. She dipped a cloth bandage in a wet herbal solution and placed it on Lewis's eye. But his injured eye became infected and the infection spread to his other eye. Within a short time, Lewis lost sight in both eyes and was permanently blind. At that time, most people who were blind were helpless. They had to depend on others. Only the wealthy or those of a high position had any hope of getting an education or earning a decent living. Many ended up becoming beggars. Tuesday. What would become of Lewis? Part 2. The story of Lewis Braille. The story so far. At age 3, Lewis Braille became blind after playing with a tool in his father's harness shop. Mr. Braille carved a small wooden cane for Lewis to help the boy feel things that were ahead of him when he walked. When Lewis was six, a new priest came to town. The priest gave Lewis lessons for a year, but Lewis wanted to go to the village school with the other children. So a classmate agreed to pick him up each morning and led him to school. Lewis listened to the teacher and memorized what he heard. Even though he couldn't read or write, he was the best student in the class. He studied there for three years. At times Lewis was frustrated because he could not read or write. The priest and the principal thought Lewis would do better in a school for blind students. There was only one school like this in France, the Royal Institute for Blind Youth. It was in Paris, 25 miles away. Lewis's parents were reluctant to let him go away from home. He was only 10 and the school was very expensive. The priest persuaded his parents to apply. The school accepted Lewis and even paid for him to go to class and live there. The school was in a rundown old building. It was damp and dark and the students were given very little food. After his classes, Lewis learned to play the cello and the piano. He couldn't read music, but he memorized the notes. Lewis was looking forward to learning to read. Unfortunately, there were very few books available for blind students. They were printed on heavy, waxed paper. The letters were formed by pressing the paper onto pieces of lead that were shaped like the letters of the alphabet. This process was called embossing. The books were very heavy. One sentence could take up a whole page. Lewis learned to run his fingers over the pages so that he could feel each letter. It took a long time to read this way. By the time he got to the end of a sentence, he would forget the words at the beginning. Wednesday. Was there a better way to make books for blind readers? The Story of Lewis Braille, Part 3. The Story So Far. Lewis Braille studied at a school for blind students where the few books made for the blind were heavy and hard to read. A retired French army captain, Charles Barbier, came to visit the Royal Institute for Blind Youth. He had invented a way for soldiers to send messages to each other at night without needing light or having to talk. If they had to use light or make noise, the enemy could spot the soldiers and shoot at them. With a pointed tool, the captain punched dots and dashes into heavy paper. The dots and dashes represented different sounds. These marks were combined to form words and could be read without light or sound. But the soldiers found it too difficult to use. The captain thought blind students might be able to use it instead. 
The students tried to read some of the messages but they also found the system complicated to learn and difficult to use. Many dots were required to represent a single word. Still, it took up less space than the existing process of embossing actual letters from the alphabet. Lewis was excited about this new way to read. He spent most of his free time learning the system. He knew it would have to be made simpler. He also had to find a way to include numbers in punctuation. So in his spare time and late at night, Lewis worked hard to improve the captain's system. With a pointed instrument called a stylus and a wooden writing board with paper, Lewis continued working on it. After two years of work, when Lewis was 15, he finally created a new code. It was easier to learn and quicker to read. Lewis brought it to the new director of the Royal Institute. To test the code, the director read a newspaper article aloud. Lewis punched the stylus into the paper to write down what the director said. When the director finished, Lewis ran his fingers over the raised dots and repeated back the exact words read by the director. The director was very impressed. Thursday, would other students be able to use Lewis's new code? Part 4 the story of Lewis Braille. The story so far. Lewis Braille spent his spare time at his school for the blind trying to improve on a night writing system so blind students could learn to read and write. Lewis's classmates at the Royal Institute for Blind Youth tried out his new alphabet system. They were delighted to find how well it worked. Now they could take notes in class. Memorizing long class lectures wasn't necessary anymore. They didn't need anyone's help to read or write. Lewis was very happy that his classmates liked his new code, but he wanted other blind people to be able to use it too. The school director wrote to the French government and asked if Lewis's dot alphabet could be made the official system of writing for the blind. In the meantime, Lewis became an assistant teacher at the institute. His classes were very popular. He also spent a lot of time copying books into his code. He even added symbols so that blind musicians could read and write music. He eventually had a book published describing his new code. Lewis also learned to play the organ. He played so well, he worked as an organist at a nearby church. He soon became a full-time teacher at the Institute. In 1834, Lewis demonstrated his dot alphabet at the exhibition of industry held in Paris. All sorts of inventions were shown there. He took notes as people spoke and then read back what was said. The French king was at the exhibition and saw Lewis's invention but he didn't make it the official language for the blind. The king also didn't offer any money to create books in the dot alphabet. Friday, would Lewis's invention ever be used to help all blind people? Part 5, The Story of Lewis Braille The story so far. Lewis Braille created a new dot alphabet for his blind classmates. When Lewis returned from the exhibition of industry in Paris, he was sad that his invention wouldn't be available to other blind people. In the last few years he had occasionally felt tired. He also sometimes had a bad cough and fever. He grew sicker. His doctor told him he had consumption, or what we today call tuberculosis. At that time the only remedy for this disease was fresh air and rest. Lewis taught less and spent time outside. He continued to improve the dot alphabet. He added the letter W, so that his code could be used to write English. And he worked on creating math textbooks for blind students. A new director came to the Royal Institute for Blind Youth and wouldn't allow the students to continue using Lewis's new alphabet. The director was afraid that the students would become too independent and would no longer need the teachers who could see. Lewis was very disappointed. His health grew worse, and several times he went home to Coupvre to rest. He worked on writing books and music in his dot system. He died in Paris in 1852. Two years later, the French government approved the dot system. It was called Braille, after Lewis's last name. In 1878, the World Congress for the Blind voted to make Braille the system of reading and writing for all blind people worldwide. With the help of the United Nations, Braille has been adapted to almost every known language. Many books are available in Braille. Some are created by typing the words on a computer that translates them into Braille. They are then transferred onto paper or metal plates for use on a press. Louis Braille's house in Coupvre, France, is now a museum. On the wall a plaque says that Louis Braille was born in the house and that he invented the system of writing and raised dots for the blind. It also says, he opened the doors of knowledge to all those who cannot see. Hi everyone. If you like my video, so please give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any doubt, 
then you can write it in the comments section down below. I will try to answer it soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.